the back of the portfolio, you're really bored for the wall. Uh, so you'll notice that I'm in the middle of trying to finish a doctor degree, and so if you've done any advanced degree work, you know that typically they keep you in the program until they've extracted just enough blood to make your face flush, but they can still walk in, so I'm close, but clearly have more flesh to give. So, part of my doctoral studies is a lecture demonstration, and for the topic I chose the music of an emerging Minneapolis based composer, her name is Abby Patinas. And if you've been on choral music for the past decade or so, you will know that it is really difficult to find something fresh in choral music. We kind of like our favorites, like Morton Morrison and Eric Whitaker, so we produce the same type of music. So, to find a fresh voice in choral music is really pretty astounding these days. And I believe that Abby Matias brings a really fresh voice to choral music. And I think this next piece demonstrates it. It's really different. And part of what you can hear in her is her journey as a three-time cancer survivor, a young single small business owner, and a composer who's really trying to make her own way and own musical voice in the world. So we really hope you enjoy this sample of Abby Matias' music, Jerusalem Luminosa.
next thing is Summers of Rome. So would you welcome to the stage Miss Dory Summers.
I say it as an undergrad student in St. Paul. I say it as a master's student in Boulder. I say it in St. Peter's Basilica. I say it in the British Isles. I say it all the way across Italy and southern Spain. I say it as a graduate student, as a doctoral student. I say it in professional courses. I say it with other conductors. The only place I haven't done the piece is with my own choir. <laughs> And that's partly because the original arrangement was SATB, and sometimes those things just don't translate well. But I finally got frustrated. I'm like, come on, let's, let's just do it. So <coughs> I, I'm extremely proud of the way these gals have steward this piece. It's a very special piece of music. And I hope it just pours itself over you and reminds you that we worship a great God, and you are deeply loved.
and that's what I want at my funeral, just so you know, okay? <laughs> in choral music is just the ability to create different colors. It's like a box of crayons. You want blue, you want magenta, you want pink, and you want brown and black, and sometimes just like all together. But I think the mark of a good choir, and we're still moving this direction, I would say, for women's choir, is that you can produce different timbres, different colors. It's like Chinese food, Italian food, Thai food, you know, French food, all kind of in the same concert program. So this is a much different flavor. I'm doing that so you make sure you know it should be different flavors. So hopefully it sounds different. Bulgarian folk song, essentially very whimsical. Of course, it's about a girl who likes a guy. In this case, he's a cowball player. There was a flautist, and she's trying to get some attention. So let's see if we get a different flavor for a different story. <laughs>
afternoon and last night as well, but more than a pianist, uh, Christelle is a mentor for myself, an elder. She's the piece that holds us together as a choir more than I could ever explain the words. So we just honor her for her great work.
introduce our souls for the next piece. Uh, Miss Krista Kuhn is a voice major here at CCU. And when she, when she got the news that she was going to get the soul, this is what she texted me. She said, hey Fleming, I feel like that song just speaks encouragement into my testimony. He really hasn't failed me yet. And this is what she meant. Krista had a tragic accident and damaged her ears, uh, had some hearing loss, and over the past several years has undergone seven ear surgeries to repair that damage. She is deaf in one ear and hears with the assistance of a hearing aid. By all human standards, she should not be a singer. Most of us can barely sing with two good ears. <laughs> Krista does it with a half. And so I think that you will get the point that she's doing more than solely. She is testifying to a God that absolutely never fails us. He never failed me yet.
blessing. And you're really just here to watch a family event, so thanks for bearing with us. But we're singing this blessing primarily to our seniors, so just, yeah. Bittersweet to say goodbye to these gals. So I would just invite you to hold your applause and fill them all up in front of the stage. <clears throat> Miss Lindsay Hart. Miss Krista Stenberg. Miss Hannah Suzuki. Miss Jane Columbia. Miss Brittany Farrell. Miss Sarah Gadea. Miss Melissa Charles. Miss Dory Summers. And Miss Casey Stay. Now let me just give you the facts. By raw estimates combined, these nine ladies have logged 800 hours of choir rehearsal in four years across 630 rehearsals. They've sang in over 55 plus concerts combined. 55 times they put on the black dress, donned the black floor, and got her done. <laughs> but what we can't measure actually today is just the amount of blood, sweat, and tears for several of these gals that have sang in both university choir and women's choir. These singers are special because this is a class that has been with us the whole way. And we, they're irreplaceable. The whole day left, they will not be filled. It will just be preserved as a legacy. So would you help me honor these great and